It is often said that a picture is worth a thousand words. This proverb is very true in communicating ideas to solve problems. To properly communicate technical information about objects that must be manufactured, fluency in the universal language of technical drawing is required. One of the first steps to learning this language is developing the ability to sketch. Visualiz visualizing, communicating, exploring, and documenting ideas occur throughout the, design, the process of design. The process begins when a client and an engineer meet for the first time to define a problem. Technical drawings are often needed when research requires field measurements to be taken so that a scenario can be replicated, when an idea occurs during lunch and must be quickly recorded on a napkin before it is lost, when teams of people feed off of each other's ideas and brainstorm possible solutions, when an engineer works out the details of a design solution so that it can be prototyped and tested, and when a solution has been proven to work and must be documented for reproduction. Technical drawings are important throughout each step of the design process. Technical sketching differs from te technical drawing. Technical sketches, as we did in Unit 1, are made with a pencil, paper, and an idea. Technical drawings, as we're going to learn in Unit 2, advances a sketch to follow specific technical drawing guidelines that employ the use of tools such as isometric graph paper and the aid of a computer. Likewise, technical sketching differs from artistic sketching. Technical sketches follow the same standards that govern the development of technical drawings, except the sketches are done freehand. In this lesson, you're going to learn the basic rules of technical sketching and the drawing standards that apply. Different line conventions are used, which means different styles and thicknesses of lines used to develop and communicate messages about an object's geometry. We use different styles and thicknesses of lines to indicate different parts of an object. For example, the basic outline of an object looks different than hidden lines that might be in the middle or the center parts of lines. The next few slides are going to show you some basic line conventions and how they're used. Make sure you're taking notes in your engineering notebook. First off is the construction line. Construction lines are shown right here. They're lightly drawn in your engineering notebook and just used as guides. They're not actually part of the object, but they're needed in order to get the correct proportion and dimensions in your drawings. These uh, Use these lines to guide drawing other lines and shapes. Object lines. Object lines are these dark lines that actually outline the outside of the object. They define the shape of the object that you're trying to draw, and they are very darkly drawn. Hidden lines. Hidden lines are shown right here to show interior detail that's not visible from the outside of the part. Notice right here on your hidden lines that they are drawn as a dashed line. What's important about the hidden lines is that they're not a solid line. They're marked as a dash to show that the inside of this part that you look at has been drilled out. Center lines obviously mark the center of objects. For example, on this part right here, there's been a hole drilled out the length of the part. The center line marks the length of the hole. Typically, center lines have a smaller section in the middle and then followed by two long parts on the outside. This is a center line marking the center of this hole, and then over here on this side there is another center line showing that this is a hollow space and marking where the center of the line belongs. It's important to note that center lines are half as thick as the object lines that we use to show the outside part of the object. They're drawn half as thick. Section lines. Section lines are often used to show where material is cut away. Sometimes there are protrusions to an object that will um, obstruct the viewing of the rest of the object. So we may have to cut an object in order to show the inside detail of the part. Whenever a part has been cut off, we draw these diagonal section lines in order to show that you're missing the frontal part of the object. A short break line, 
as in this jagged little short break line right here, is just a freehand jagged line that shows where the part has been broken to reveal detail. This is showing the short break line right here is being used to show the edge of where the part has been cut away. So the section lines show that you're looking into the part after the front of it has been removed. Your short break line is showing where we used the cut to cut away the part. It can also be used to shorten a long continuous part. Dimension lines are very important to parts. They show the measurements or um, of certain of particular parts. These are really important to technical drawings and dimension lines often make technical drawings different than technical sketches. In fact, whenever your instructor asks you to annotate a sketch, often dimensions are part of your annotations. The actual distance is typically located, this distance part right here, in the middle of the two arrows that you draw that show the length of the part. The length of this part is 12 inches and so I've put the 12 in the middle of the two arrows that are pointing out towards the extension lines. The arrows are used to show where the dimension line starts and ends. Okay. These are extension lines. Extension lines follow from the part this is also an extension line right here that follow their part of the dimension lines. The actual middle part is the dimension line. The extension lines extend from the object out to show exactly what length we are talking about when we annotate the dimension. The line is 1 16th of an inch away from the part. Right in here we, we keep a 16th of an inch away from the part clear to show that it is an extension line so that you're not confused that it's actually a an object line as part of the object. Long break lines are used to show when an object is very long and it's uniform, we can often break the part in half to shorten it to fit it all in one object. So if this is different from a short break line and notice that we have two breaks and we have some space in between to show that you're actually missing part of the object but it's okay because it's actually exactly uniform and the same as the two parts that you see on either side. So obviously this part as it is is not 12 inches long but we use the long break line to denote that it has been broken so that we could fit it all in the space on the sketch. The dimension shows you that it's 12 inches long. The long break part lets you know that it's not proportional because we've actually removed part of it to fit it all in the sketch. Use these jagged lines to show that the part has been broken. Leader lines. We often have to show diameters and radii of circles and arcs, like to show how the amount of arc. So leader lines are these arrows that show, this is a diameter circle showing you the diameter of the circle is two inches. The leader line is this line that extends down to show which circle we're talking about that has a two inch diameter. Here's another leader line showing that we have a diameter of half an inch and that belongs to this circle here in the middle. Here's a third leader line showing that the diameter of this circle is one inch for this circle here that the leader line is pointing to and then it also tells you that this circle is half an inch deep. These standards relate to technical drawing more precise than freehand sketching so that we're all on the same page whenever we look at a technical drawing people from around the world can look at a drawing and understand what's being represented. So that's why these standards are a guide when you sketch and we should really work to follow these standards. There are some precedents. Sometimes you have an object line that needs to be on top of a hidden line. So obviously you can't show a solid line and a dotted line when they're supposed to go in the same exact spot. So here's some examples of what takes precedence whenever you have um, different lines in the same sketch in the same place. Complex object sketches may require different line types to overlap. So that's when we use these line precedents. The rules that follow this are Object lines take precedence over hidden and center lines. So we have to see the outline and thick lines of an object before we see a hidden or center line. Hidden lines take precedence over center lines. So if we need to show that there is a hidden part to my object and it also has a center there, the hidden line will take precedence. 
then cutting plane lines, such as section lines, as we saw earlier, take precedence over all others. We need to be able to show that the plane was cut so that people know you're missing part of that object in order to be able to see the interior detail. Here's an example of where an object line has had to take precedence over a hidden line. This hole has been drilled into this part, so this really is hidden. But because it's part of the object line as well, it's a thick line. Here, again, my object line has precedence over the center line. This is a center part, but it's also an object line. Thank you for watching. The understanding of technical sketching is crucial for designers to uh, effectively convey their ideas about a project. Sketching is the beginning stage of product development. Students will learn how to sketch isometric, oblique, perspective, and multi-view sketches of various objects in the next few lessons all throughout Unit 2. Now it's time to go to Blackboard and open up the Line Conventions handout and use this PowerPoint and the handout to complete the assignment.